All right, let's get started. Today we're gonna to be tying the Flexo Crab. We're gonna be tying this one in a size 1-0. This is a Daiichi 2546. We're gonna start out this fly pattern by just getting our thread started here on the hook. Build up a little layer of thread here on the hook shank. Work our thread back to about one third of the way down the hook shank from the eye of the hook. From here we're gonna add our weight. We're gonna be using medium lead eyes. And the reason we're tying these so far forward is we want the crab to fall forward. So when you stop the fly, it falls like a natural crab kinda on its side as you would see them falling in nature. So just go ahead, kind of X wrap these eyes in. Get some helicopter wraps on there. Just make sure these eyes aren't going anywhere. Now on my flexo crabs, I like to add a second weight, but a much lighter one. I think it just balances out the crab a little better. Adds a little bit extra weight, but we're gonna be using large V chain. And all we're gonna do is just tie it in a little bit in front of the point of the hook. And take it, tie it in the same way we just did the lead eye. Some extra wraps on there. And if you don't get these eyes perfectly straight on there, it's not gonna make too much of a difference, but just try to make sure they're not moving around much on you. Some helicopter wraps. And then we're gonna work the thread to the middle of the hook shank. From here, invert the fly. Now we're gonna add an egg sack. So for the egg sack, I like to use McFly foam. This is their orange color. And all you need is just to pull off a little strand, McFly foam, and just cut yourself off just a little section. You take this little section, lay it right on top of the shank, come down with a couple loose wraps, and then get tight with a couple hard wraps, get a few wraps right in front of the material, and a few wraps right behind it. I like to just lift up on the material Lift up on the material, take my scissors, and trim. Gives me a little half moon shape. If you need to, you can just come in here, kind of trim some of it out, get it to the size you want it. If you wanted to, you could make it go all the way around the hook, but I don't really see a need to do that as I don't think they're gonna be seeing the bottom of this fly very much. So from here, we can go ahead and flip our hook back over and work our thread to the back of the hook. I like to work it just a little bit down the bend and then come back up right even with the barb of the hook. From here, we're gonna get our 1 4 inch flex tubing. If you'd like to know where you can buy flex tubing, cwflies.com has it. We have, I think, four or five different colors, two different sizes. We have this 1 4 inch size and we have 1 8 inch if you like to fly smaller crabs. So all I did here, I just put the flex tubing over our weights, get a little bit off the back end here, and just pinch right on the section where you wanna tie, right over where your thread was, and just come over that with some loose wraps. About three or four loose wraps, pull tight. Another three or four loose wraps, pull tight. And then just try to get a couple loose wraps over the wraps you just made, and again, pull tight. That'll keep this flexo tubing in place. So you can just trim the front here. Don't have all that extra hanging off. And then you can just come, make a few nice tight wraps right over what you just did. From here, all we're gonna do is just throw in a few half hitches on the back. 
and cut our thread off. Now I like to use this Deer Creek Sculpt XL. Uh, a lot of people in this spot would probably use a, um, a Loon Thin, but I find the Loon Thin not to be nearly as strong as the Deer Creek. So I'm gonna take the Deer Creek and just put very small amounts here on the thread wraps, just to ensure these aren't gonna come unraveled or I don't cut them in our next step. We'll give that a few spins, just even out, and hit it with our light. So now we can get our scissors again, come to the back of the fly, and try to cut out as much of this excess flex material as you can. You're not gonna get it all with your scissors, but luckily we have other methods for helping with that. Just try to trim it as close as you can get it. That's pretty close. So now we're gonna take it out of our vise. We're gonna get our trusty lighter and we're gonna melt the rest of those fibers back to where we have the Deer Creek. Hit it a little bit, let it melt down. Hit it again, let it melt down. Now it looks like you have a nice little neat tie in there. Put it back, oh, forgot a step. Take your sculpt again, and just on the end of where you just singed, just put some sculpt on there, and hit it with your light again. This is gonna ensure that when you push back on the flex tubing, it doesn't just push right up the hook shank. Now we can put it back in our vise. You can see I can I can push on that tubing and it's 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 not gonna go anywhere. So we get a thread again. Now we're gonna tie off the front, we're gonna flex this back and tie off on the front section. All we're gonna do is layer thread over the flex tubing, pinch it right in front of the eye of the hook, and then just push back. When I can feel the eye of the hook in my fingers, I'm gonna go ahead and do just like we did on the back of hook, three or four loose turns, pull tight. Another three or four loose turns, pull tight. See, now our thread's right behind the eye of the hook. Take our excess thread, tie over it so it doesn't unravel, and trim out the excess. Now from here, I like to just push down on the flex tubing while pulling down tight on the thread, just to kind of flex it out a little better. See, now we got this nice little perfect round shape on there. From here, we're gonna trim out this section. I like to hold the hook right on its side and just trim all the way up to the eye on one side and do the same on the other. This allows me to be able to fold these little tabs back and just come down and cut real nice and close to the eye. We'll do the same thing here on the top. You'll have a couple stragglers in there. You can cut out the longer ones with your scissors, but if you have too many of them, it's, it's not a big deal. All you really need to do is just take, push your flex material back a little bit, hold it, and just tie right over those with your thread. I'll take the majority of them out. There's still a few little stragglers showing, but we'll handle those in just a second. So we'll whip finish. And now for any of those remaining stragglers, we'll just hit them with the lighter again so that they melt right back into the fly. Now nothing impedes the eye of our hook. From here, we can go ahead and start making our legs. I like to use this micro ultra chenille. When I do the legs, I like to take one strand or one length and then a second length and cut it off and do that three times. I got a couple made up here already. 
So we got our legs made. Now all we're gonna do is just take a little sewing needle that's got a little thread loop on the back of it, a little makeshift leg puller. We're gonna try and put this as close to the middle of the fly on the bottom side as we can. We don't wanna put it all the way up here at the top because it can cause the fly to spin. So we're gonna try as much as we can to get these towards the center of the fly. So all you do is just push your needle through, thread one of your legs through your loop on the end, and pull through and even out on each side. We're gonna jump just a little bit in front of where we put that leg in, do the same thing. Again, put a leg into our loop and pull through. And we're gonna get one more leg in there. I try to keep all the legs towards the back side of the fly, which will be the opposite side that we're gonna put the claws on. If I can get this looped open. And, and pull through, even these out. Then to make these legs stay in place, we're gonna take our Deer Creek Sculpt again, and we're just gonna hit it with a generous amount right where the legs meet the flex body. Put a little on that side, a little on this side. Let it soak in there a little bit. And just go ahead and hit it with our torch. That'll make these legs in there good and tight. Some fish can still pull them out, but if you lose a leg, you can always replace them really easily. It's one of the nice things about this fly. Now to measure the legs, I like to take the length of the body of the fly and then take that length right off the edge of the crab and go to the edge and cut. Do the same thing again on the other side and cut. That ensures my legs on both sides are right around the same size. I take my lighter and I just burn the ends of each leg. Get nice little singes on there. That'll keep your legs from unraveling and gives it a nice little pointy edge, just like a real crab. So the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is make our claws. Just like with the legs, we're gonna use this ultra chenille. Except this time, instead of using two lengths, we're gonna use one, two, three, four lengths. Cut that. We're gonna take that and fold it in half. When you have it folded in half at the top, where the loop is, just make an overhand knot. Pull tight, so you have yourself a little loop. And we're gonna go ahead and make another overhand knot below the first one. Now you can Make it as short or as long as you want it. I generally don't like to make them more than maybe a quarter inch between the two knots. This back knot is gonna be the knuckle that stops the chenille from going into the body and it'll keep your flies a little bit more uniform in length. So from here on this loop, we're just gonna cut it to make the claw and then sends that just like we did with the legs. Make a nice little claw shape. And then we can just trim some of this extra chenille we have on the back side. And we take our little handy dandy leg puller again. And we're gonna insert it on the front of the fly, just on each side of each of the weights that we put in. 
So, so you can see it, you can see the bead chain, put it just on the side of it and push it all the way through the back. Then we're gonna put our claw in to our leg puller and pull through. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Get it just on the inside of that weight. Put your claw on the leg puller. And again, pull through. I won't always pull through easy. Sometimes you just gotta help it a little bit. And we're gonna take our Deer Creek Sculpt again. And on the bottom side where the knuckle meets the body, put a nice little dab of Sculpt and hit it with the torch. Now on these, we're gonna do a second dab of Sculpt on the top of them, just cause we don't want these going anywhere on us. Prefer not to have to replace them all the time if I can help it. So now those are in there pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our eyes. We're gonna use these mono eyes. These are size extra large. If you were making a smaller crab, say like a number four, you could just go down to the large size, it'll be fine. So we're gonna take these, just find the center of it, go ahead, cut it in half. And we can take each of those eyes and just stick them right between our two claws, right into the body. And again, do just like we did with the claws, a little bit of sculpt on the bottom. Sometimes you have to kind of hold them to get them to stay right where you want them. But once you get the sculpt on there, they're pretty much locked in place, put a little bit on the top of the eyes, kind of work it around them some. Like so, and hit it once again. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's your Flexo Crab. If you wanted to come back later on, you could take a Sharpie, hit the, uh, the edges of the claws with some red or some blue, uh, red and blue for the tips of the, or for the, tips of the legs. You could throw some barring in on the legs if you want, maybe throw some brown barring. Uh, if you wanted to add a weed guard, really simple, you just do a weed guard um, right when you're tying in the front of the fly. But yeah, that's a great, uh, great permit pattern, great bonefish pattern, redfish, really anything that'll eat a, eat a crab. So that's the uh, flexor crab. Thanks for watching.